Hello. Hello, everybody. Good Hello, evening. Everybody. Welcome. Hey, Bas. <laughs> Good to see your face. So don't wonder you're all automatically muted from the beginning. Uh, if you want to speak, we can unmute you. So no yep. Please just raise your hand. You can do it physically, or if you're not showing your video, there's a button in the bottom with which you can raise your hand. Um, yeah, just to make sure we don't have any unfortunate disturbances. And welcome, everybody. It's nice to see that there's some people that are that I think have been here before. Yeah, so we're excited to have the discussion today with you all. Yeah, maybe we wait one or two minutes, uh, and then yeah, just yeah. start. Yeah, definitely. Ah, uh, we should mention that we are currently recording. So if you do not wish to be recorded, if you're uncomfortable with it, you of course can exactly turn off your webcam. And if you'd like it not to be shown, then um, yeah, we can also edit that out. And that's of course, you're very well right. I'm excited about all of your opinions already. Where is everybody uh, from? I know there's Dutch, and I know there's some people from Eastern Europe, which is a bit unspecific, but if you want, you can type in the chat and tell us where you're from and perhaps what pulled you towards this. And actually, I'm, I'm curious also whether you already knew MIND or if this is the first time you're attending an event by us. I think that's also quite interesting. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Hungry, cool. Boss is half -made. Ah, cool. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Romania. First time here. Welcome, welcome. That's exciting. Munich. So some first timers, some people that have been here more often. Just wait for a bit more and then we will start. I'll give you a short explanation about everything. Hmm. <laughs> we are representing Amsterdam Southeast. Nice. At a local, like the local representatives. According to Sasha, that's where I'm from as well, boss. She keeps calling the country Amsterdam, so I'm <laughs> from the area. <laughs> <laughs> she might get angry at me now. Okay, shall we start? What do you think, Andy? I think so, I think so. Um, yeah, maybe a short suggestion. Let's leave the room open until Maybe for 10 more minutes and then just uh, close it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, there's still some people dropping in, but I'll start with a short introduction of who we are and what we're doing. Uh, yeah, first of all, welcome. Um, my name is Andy. I'll be the moderator for the evening. And with me are Patrick Wentorp and Lucas Beislau. Um, they will present their standpoints in a little bit, but first um, to explain to you what we are doing, this will be the fourth online discussion. We usually try to find a topic that is interesting and has a bit of friction where we know that opinions are a bit divided, also so we can explore and kind of push our boundaries of understanding of certain topics. And we are doing this in the framework of the Mind Foundation and specifically the MIND Members Association. Uh, this is a free event that kind of invites you to get to know us, what our attitude is, what our intention is, and kind of give you a feel for our organization. Uh, this is why it's a freely accessible event, because uh, one of our goals as an organization is to strive towards a Bewusstseinskultur, or in English, a culture of consciousness, 
to kind of raise the public understanding and in how we relate to other states of consciousness uh, about our relational um, way of looking at everything else in the world, really. So in that framework, why do we choose the topic of sense-making? Um, I think sense-making is actually a large part of the psychedelic experience. There is a lot of confusion in there, <laughs> usually for most people. Um, and how do we make sense of such an experience? And it's not only the psychedelic experience of which we have to make sense. Everything that happens to us in life, if you get hit by a car, if you lose your job, if you fall in love, these are all events that happen to us which we need to put into the larger framework of our life. What does it mean for us? How, which lessons do we pull from this? And what does this mean for our further path? These are all components of sense-making. Um, we kind of hinted at conspiracy theories in the introduction to this talk. Um, it's not exactly what, we, what we'll be talking about today, though of course it is a part of sense-making which is more in the public awareness uh, these days. Um, though again, this is only a small part of sense-making and it is something that for a lot of people gives um, a lot of, well, actually in a way certainty because a lot of people feel there's something wrong in the world and it, maybe I'm speaking now from my personal opinion, but I think it also gives a lot of hold to this idea of there's, there's something wrong with the world, there's this evil force that's driving this um, wrongness and it kind of gives a focus for this negative energy, which is a big part of sense making. All right. Um, we kind of want to give you a McKenna quote and then invite you to give your opinion uh, or your perspective with a poll. Um, I'm going to read this out because I can't do it from my memory. Psychedelics are illegal, not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. Of course, there are a lot of model processing and sense making in there, but before I say much more about it, I will ask you this question. You should see the question in front of you um, and be able to participate. Do you agree or not with this quote? So far, the majority does agree. Five out of six votes. Okay, one more person voting, having a tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no questions are difficult, but it's, there's so much nuance in the statement, right? Okay, perfect. Uh, 11 out of 11 voted, seven voted yes, which is 64%, and four voted no, which is 36%. Ah, I can actually, uh, yeah, perfect. So straight after that, we'd like to give you a bit more nuanced question, uh, more related to what we're talking about today. How do psychedelics affect our sense making? And again, like before you see the question now. Very uniform opinion here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I also see in the chat that someone <clears throat> wrote both. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we will come back to this. Uh, the yes or no question is a little bit of a trick. They improve and they worsen. Yeah. Perhaps they improve by worsening it for a short period of time. 
<laughs> Three more people are voting. So far, nine have voted in favor of they approve it. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't say that before you voted. It's kind of influencing it, huh? It's a spoiler. <laughs> That's a real spoiler. <laughs> It's not exactly uh, scientifically uh, valid. Yeah, it seems like the three people w wrote in the chat, they're kind of in the middle. We didn't put that option, so. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. End it, yeah. So, like yeah. shown. Okay. Awesome. So, of course, we're excited to see you uh, if in about one and a half hours your opinion will have changed whether it will have solidified, maybe weakened. We shall see. Um, we will be doing it in largely the same structure as we always do it, which is for those who are new, we uh, will first have two opposite standpoints presented, in this case by Lucas and Patrick, um, arguing that psychedelics either increase or decrease your sense making or improve or worsen. Um, after which we will have um, some five minutes if somebody didn't really understand any line of argumentation. And after that, we will have breakout rooms. So we will form groups of three or four people and you'll be able to discuss amongst yourselves uh, the question, how do psychedelics affect your sense making? And after 20 minutes, um, we come back to the large room altogether. We then like you to, during those 20 minutes, also um, in the last five or so, quickly appoint somebody that will then represent the group and kind of explain the group process. Uh, were you unanimous? Was there uh, a lot of divided standpoints? How did you resolve that? What were the arguments that were most persuasive to the group members? Um, and kind of share the process. And we'll take some time uh, for that. And then afterwards, this usually kind of flows into a general discussion, um, just an open discussion where um, we'll be able to interact and kind of um, explore the um, things that pique our interest the most. Um, does anybody have any questions right now? Perfect. Then Lucas, I think I'm honored to give the floor to you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, before we start, I'll put the links to three papers in the chat uh, because I'm gonna wanna talk about these papers just so you have a reference point. Da, da, da. There's one, there's two, and this is number three. Yeah, so, um, Welcome everyone, really happy to be here. I'm gonna start us off by presenting the first opinion, kind of. And uh, I'm gonna present the difficult opinion today because apparently no one is on my side. I'm gonna argue that basically psychedelics will tend to worsen your sense-making abilities. Um, specifically, I'm going to argue that taking psychedelics might make you more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. Um, so again, as Andy said, the conspiracy theory part is just kind of an eye catcher. Uh, but because they do that, I assume they also might worsen the ability to make sense of the world. Okay. Um, so I have basically four points that I want to go through and kind of four supports for my argument. Uh, the first one relates to the first two papers I posted. Um, so these are two papers about the acute effect of LSD. And the first one is from the group of Caja Terrace in London. And they showed that under the influence of LSD, people are more suggestible. Um, in the study, suggestible has a very specific meaning. It means if you are under the influence of LSD and somebody tells you to imagine something, you are better in doing that, right? So it's a very specific way of thinking about suggestibility. 
specifically, right, telling people to imagine something and they get better at that under the influence of LSD. So that's the first study. And the second one by the group of Katrin Preller in Switzerland and Follenwalder, um, they showed that again with LSD, people are more likely to adopt their opinion to the opinion of others. Uh, again, a very specific example relating to an aesthetic judgment of a picture. So people were asked to say how good this picture look, looks, then they said, well, all the other people said this picture looks way better. And then they were asked again, and mostly people said, okay, I also think this picture looks better now. Uh, it's important to say like none of these authors ever mention sense making or conspiracy theories. So these are all my personal constructions <laughs> out of these papers. Um, but what I draw from these two studies and basically reports of psychedelic experiences is that while you're under the influence, you are more likely and more easily agree with what other people tell you or what you are exposed to. So you are exposed to certain things while high and you are more likely to think this is true or you're more likely to agree with that or you're more likely to be able to empathize with that, to integrate this into your world with you. Um, and I think because that's a possibility, if you are exposed to conspiratory thinking while under the influence, you might more easily believe in these things, right? So examples would be, you're tripping on a festival and the dude comes up to you and talks to you about, uh, I don't know, some very far out ideas about the world. And you might be more likely to think this is a true thing he says, or you might be more likely to imagine what he says is actually true. Um, yeah, so that's basically the first point. Uh, you might think, well, I just can't, cannot hang out with these people and I'm gonna be fine. I think for a lot of people it also applies, for example, if you're exposed to YouTube videos or if you're on an online forum or just by accident and under the influence, if you're exposed to these ideas that worsen your sense making, your own sense making might be influenced. Okay, so that's basically the first line of argument. Um, the second point relates to the search paper I put there, and this is about illusory pattern perception. Um, oh, this is a very specific thing. I think there's a window. I'm gonna check if there's an airplane outside. Um, so, illusory pattern perception is a specific thing that people experience when they trip. Uh, it's the thing, for example, when you see faces in the clouds, or you see faces in the trees, or you see specific patterns emerge from places where there were no patterns before. I think clouds are always the best example because people love looking at clouds when they are under the influence and then they can see patterns that they wouldn't see sober. And this specific skill, I'll say, or trait uh, is related to believing in conspiracy theories, what's correlated with believing in these theories. So people who have more of these perceptions in a sober state also tend to be more likely to believe in conspiratory uh, beliefs or conspiracy theories. Uh, which again is support for the first point that while you're under the influence, there's a very specific thing amplified, this pattern perception, which makes you more likely to see patterns somewhere in the world that might be illusory, right? Um, yeah, so that's the second point. The third point also kind of relates to this the psychedelic state itself. Uh, so what happens for a lot of people is that they have very important experiences when they trip or things that they see or that they experience seem very important, right? The insights they gain or the ideas they gain about the world, they seem as a like this are very important things. They've learned something important. And humans in general tend to look for important explanations for important events. So if we see things that are really big in the news that seem to influence everybody's lives, we tend to look for big explanations for those. 
Um, this is called, I wrote this down, <laughs> the proportionality bias. Right? Uh, so that is why there's more theories about the JFK assassination than the assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan, who nobody cares about. And he didn't succeed, so nobody cares about who did it or why they did it. Uh, but because JFK succeeded, there's way bigger theories about that. That's kind of the idea behind that. And if we apply that to the psychedelic state, this is, again, a very personal theory. There's nothing published about that or anything. But I believe that you tend to assign importance to the insights you have or the experience. And because this was so important to you, you might look for more important theories that explain that. Right? It couldn't just be uh, accident or couldn't just happen like that. There has to be something bigger behind that. And this idea of looking for big insights where there might be none might also lead you to believe theories that are, again, illusory or see patterns where there are none. OK, so these three points all relate to basically the psychedelic state itself. Right? It might make you more suggestible. And if you're exposed to these weird ideas or conspiratory beliefs in the tripping state, you might believe they are important insights. And because they are important insights, important theories might lie behind this. And then there's a final point, the fourth point, which relates more to, um, let's say, kind of the integration aspect. So psychedelic users, in general, are a fringe group. Right? Possession of psychedelic substances is mostly illegal. Um, most, so by taking a psychedelics, you're already kind of at the edge of society. Right? You, this is a community that's a fringe group. It's at the edges of society. Very few people do it, and it's very stigmatized, and there's a lot of secrecy involved. And fringe groups like these tend to have more open borders kind of they are more open to fringe beliefs in general because they allow people in there who take lsd secretly and mushrooms secretly and have all this fringe knowledge so because they open to that they might be open to other fringe beliefs as well so when you had an important psychedelic experience and you want to talk about it you want to know what happened you want to think about it you might look for people from the community, which makes total sense. Obviously, you're going to talk to people who had similar experiences and not to people who have no clue what you're even talking about. And I'm saying that by having to go to a fringe community for integration and integration advice, you're more likely to encounter dangerous or, let's say, very likely untrue beliefs during the integration phase. So if you're lost after an experience, you want to know why it happened the way it happened or why um, it was the way it was, and you meet someone that can give you an explanation that makes sense for you because they have experienced it as well, um, but that might not be true. Right? Of course, again, this doesn't happen necessarily. Not every psychedelic user, obviously, is a fringe, has fringe beliefs about the world, but I'm just saying it's more likely to meet people who might worsen your sense making ability um, because this is a fringe group. Okay, um, yeah, so that's, that's basically the whole line I have. Uh, again, just repetition, it's four points. The first three basically relate to when you are under the influence of a psychedelic and you encounter let's say, stick to conspiracy theories, you're more likely to empathize with them, you're more likely to imagine they could be true, and you're more likely to believe these are important. So then afterwards, if you want to integrate that and encounter more people with these fringe beliefs, it might make you more likely to believe the theories as well. Um, yeah, o obviously, it's not a necess necessity. Obviously, it doesn't happen necessarily. I'm just saying it might make you more likely. And because this could make it more likely, I'm saying psychedelic use can actually worsen your ability to make sense of the world. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you.
I, I definitely uh, see your point that it's not inherently always uh, in any certain direction. But maybe Patrick will uh, convince us otherwise. So Well, I, I'll try to for sure. And it goes without saying that I'm, of course, completely um, of different opinion than Lucas. Uh, I also think that he kind of framed it, uh, framed some things in a rather negative way. For example, having fringe beliefs and uh, having beliefs that are new or could be dangerous, right? So this is something that uh, I want to delve into. Before, um, I also want to say that, of course, this is not my own opinion that I'm presenting here, but it's rather presented as a foundation for further discussion. And um, yeah, I'm very curious for, for doing this, discussing and so on and so forth. And this brings me um, directly to my first point, because I think that psychedelics can indeed increase uh, the quality of our sense making because they enable us to do exactly this, like play with different perspectives, play with different theories, uh, because we have this, we, we kind of create this room within us from which we can just observe different things, have like this observer perspective. And I think this is quite nicely captured in uh, a paper that I really recommend you uh, to read. It's called uh, Rebus by uh, Card Harris, was just published, um, I think, last year, yeah, 2019. And um, he speaks about the theory that uh, psychedelics relax certain beliefs in our brain. Yeah, it's also like neurobiologically um, grounded this uh, theory. And what this enables us to is that we kind of get rid of all the belief systems that we had or the rigid patterns of thinking, which of course the therapeutic can be a therapeutic mechanism, but for the sense making, I think it's also very useful uh, since we have this comfortable space of not knowing, being comfortable with not knowing, but then being able to have this healthy skepticism and explore different ways of, of thinking of, of, of possibilities, right? And by the same time, so-called negative knowledge is removed. So negative knowledge could be described as knowledge. We think it's true, but it's actually not true. Yeah. And this um, effect of psychedelics may tend to help us being more modest with our beliefs and uh, having less this kind of philosophical attitude yeah, of not being too attached to our beliefs. This goes hand in hand with the second point. It's a little bit similar, but also a little bit different, which is that psychedelics enable us to have this sort of playful, explorative mindset, right? They facilitate exploration, not only exploration of experiences, but I think also exploration of different beliefs. And this openness to experience, as it's called in research, um, is also like aspects of it are intellectual curiosity, questioning traditional beliefs and authority in general. I think this is also mentioned in the McKenna quote, right? And I think um, maybe in opposition to Lucas that this is a very good thing and it actually helps us to improve our sense making and make better sense of the world. world otherwise, we would just be stuck with our rigid patterns of thinking. And this explorative mindset may help people to be more um, brave as well. Yeah. It's also about bravery when you have like a position or an opinion that is very anti-mainstream and takes some bravery to really engage in it. And I think that's a good thing. And this brings progress in the end. Yeah. The third thing I want to talk about is not so much focused on the individual, but rather on the community. As you probably know, psychedelics can, under special circumstances, increase your openness, also your openness to, to other people. And this, I think, includes that you are more open to others' beliefs or others' perspectives, I should rather say. And if you are more open to others' perspectives, this can counteract like your confirmation bias that you just want to um, hear the repetition of your own beliefs all the time. And if you're more open also to people that are not that you're not so familiar with and people who are maybe a little bit outside of your own bubble, so to speak, this can then help you to also engage in different beliefs, different perspectives, 
And I think that more information and more diverse information will improve our sense making in this regard as well. So this is kind of the third point I want to make. And last but not least, uh, I kind of want to directly attack you, Lucas, uh, because you said that uh, fringe beliefs are something, or the, the, the fringe group that psychedelic users or people who take psychedelics are in makes them very vulnerable for also having fringe beliefs, which then could oftentimes be conspiracy beliefs or beliefs that are um, yeah, dangerous to them or not very. Um, not very much supporting the development. I think that on the other hand, or, although this might be true, I think that on the other hand, being in this fringe group and, for example, having psychedelic experiences, although it's not mainstream, well, I think it's starting to get mainstream, but um, I think still it's kind of a fringe group. I think it's also very empowering in a sense because these people can or have already shown that they are willing to engage in ways of living and ways of thinking that are not so mainstream. And this is, again, I think a, a really good thing. People can um, put themselves out of the mainstream and engage in more independent thinking, question mainstream beliefs, and are maybe less attached to social pressure, which comes from this mainstream, yeah, which says it has to be like this, it has to be like this. And uh, maybe they are more open to say, well, actually, it could be different, right? So yeah, these are my four points. Um, I think they, they all go hand in hand, but there's short repetition maybe. So first one was um, also linked to the Rebus paper that psychedelics who relax our beliefs and make us more modest with the ways we um, think the world is true, kind of reduce our um, arrogance in a way, then they make us more, or they could help to make us more explorative, support a playful mindset, which then uh, would yeah, be linked to engage in various beliefs and, and theories. Psychedelics could also increase the connectedness to other people and the openness to other people, which includes being open to other people, people's opinions and have more and di more diverse information for sense making. And the last one was that psychedelics or the psychedelic experiences are experienced by a fringe group, and this fringe group is by definition kind of anti mainstream and therefore more likely to be able to engage in like anti mainstream and independent ways of thinking. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Patrick. I quite like that you both closed off with a point which had the same facts as the foundation for the argument. Quite nice, quite nice. Is there anyone currently right now that wishes to clarify something about um, either one of the four, either person's one of the four argumentation lines? Feel free to raise your hand or you can in the menu do this. I don't know if it shows. And show your hand. Don't see anything. Okay, perfect. Well, that speaks to your ability to clarify your points, gentlemen. Um, perfect. Then I shall say um, I will put you all in the breakout rooms. And I hope you have a nice discussion. I'm very much looking forward to hearing the process that you all go through. And I'm looking forward to hearing the results. So it's going to be, I think, 20 minutes, yeah? Yeah. Exactly. And you can generally talk about how you think psychedelics affect the sense-making. I mean, obviously, you can think about the argument we put forward, but we would actually be also interested, like your general ideas, what you think, and just use our ideas as a starting off point, kind of. Yeah. So I will prepare the breakouts and again, um, if somebody wants to present the process afterwards, you can either announce one, but of course the other one could also then add to this. Yeah. So this will more and more now um, go into a yeah, more interactive way of, of discussing. 
All right, so then I see you again in 20 minutes and have fun discussing. I will, I will send a little warning three minutes before it ends. Right. So, okay, the three of us are back. Nice. Ooh. Um. Yeah. Let me check my notes. I took notes, Patrick. The <laughs> 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 <No, I didn't laughs> actually, that was you made really good points. To be honest. Um. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. Both yeah. Did a really good job. It's nice. Um, I, yeah, there was, there was one thing I, I had in mind. I actually thought about that earlier too. So, I mean, you basically argued at the beginning that there's this kind of, let's say, explorative space, right, in the psychedelic state. And I actually, I mean, I agree. I actually uh, realized that as well. I just ignored this <laughs> in, in my <laughs> mind. Um, Intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I <won't. laughs> um, but what I thought, like, because I still felt that the things I argued for, that they might also be true, right? So there's a bit of a synthesis that we might probably going to work towards too. Um, yeah. But I feel like it really comes back to this idea of being a non-specific amplifier and kind of being dependent on what you can bring yourself to the experience. So. Yeah. I feel if you're already a critical thinker and you reflect a lot and you're very critical in your beliefs in general, the psychedelic state is not just going to help you, right? Mm -hmm. if you know how to deal with that and if you can critically reflect. Mm -hmm. But I still think it can be very dangerously influential. I yeah. Just, I, feel, I mean, the thing is, I never met anyone personally for whom it was like it worsened their sense making skills. But I can really imagine that being the case for people, right? Yeah. But they're not prepared properly in terms of critical thinking skills um, to work with what just happened, right? And then what I mentioned, like being in a community, maybe at a weird festival or with weird people who may know the state and then try to influence you, I think you're very susceptible to being influenced. Mm -hmm. And I think there might be actually a true true problem that could arise yeah for sure for sure and i think maybe i i leave my my kind of uh yeah point of argumentation here because of course i also see your points uh, being being valid in some sense and also one thing that i i was thinking about when preparing for this and also thinking about the quote i think it was from stanislav groff like this unspecific amplifiers um we all know of the cognitive biases we have and very often they are like biases we are not aware of. And I pretty much think that these biases are also increased or amplified by psychedelics um, because why shouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. If this is, I mean, um, there are for sure some, some qualities of consciousness that I think are, um, yeah, increased in their quality. Yeah, for example, bodily awareness. Um, there's some some really cool cool studies about it. I think I I had this model in mind of I think it was Raphael Meyer. He talked about it in his paper about meditation and self consciousness and psychedelics. So um, there you could find this kind of opposition that psychedelics decrease some qualities or capacities of consciousness, but also increase some others. And for the cognitive biases, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think this was, of course, a very bold claim, but um, I just wanted to, to point out that I also see the, the danger in there and see that, yeah, this, this state could, of course, also result in something being less um, supporting for the individual's de development. Yeah. yeah. 
I think it's a really interesting idea. I think it could be a really cool research project, right? Looking at the general basic biases that we all have, you know, like so Daniel Kahneman, old school cognitive bias studies. Yeah, yeah. If people do that again while under the influence of a psychedelic. And that would be really interesting. That would be really yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing about implicit biases as well. And I, I, I can imagine being worse, but I could also actually imagine it if you like that biases are reduced if you want that to happen in the state. I think it kind of depends, which I generally believe about the psychedelic state, that it heavily depends on what you want to do with it. Right? Yeah. If you intentionally try to reduce your bias beforehand, you might actually succeed, I guess. Um, yeah. But if, if you're you if you're honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the hard part, yeah. <laughs> I really hope you bring this up, Lucas, because I was already thinking about this when you said what you bring to the experience really matters. We're speaking so much about the state itself and the integration of it afterwards, but also the intention, like you just said, what you bring to it, the, the level of preparation and also maybe a sort of understanding of this the state that you put yourself in, if you're, because I was thinking of a person that's completely unprepared and they're taking psychedelics for the first time and they're just like, oh, I'm gonna have a good time. And suddenly they see all these connections, like they're walking through a forest and they see faces everywhere because your pattern recognition is increased and your brain really sees that quickly. So they, they start to become a bit paranoid and they go into that line of thinking and they see all these connections and they understand all that is wrong with the world. If they didn't have this preparation to understand that they were going into an altered state of consciousness, they will only experience this profundity of the experience and suddenly have this deeper level of understanding. Well, actually, they are falling into the trap of what uh, Patrick said, these increased cognitive biases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe their, their sense of deeper understanding in the in reality is, is only like this understanding or this uh, deepening of their beliefs that on, and mindset they had before the experience as well right uh, i think it was some weeks ago i talked uh, with the uh, psychedelics and coaching interest group back then uh, and we discussed about the importance of intention as well mm -hmm. and one thing i i draw from there or drew from there was that intention, of course, is not only a belief or something like a, a goal, a, an aim or a goal, right? So I want to, for example, reduce my cognitive biases with this experience. But the intention is kind of your whole mindset, right? And the points yeah. you are at when the experience starts um, in, on all levels, right? So the, the level you, for example, are aware of your cognitive biases also goes into the intention. Uh, you cannot avoid it and mm. this is something that i think is is really crucial to uh to to say yeah yeah definitely i really liked your point and about the preparation and I, because it's always what i had in mind as well doing the argument someone being unprepared and not really knowing what's going to happen and being kind of an environment that supports the uh, conspiracy beliefs for example I mean, always believe like, I mean, think, like I said, you know, most people I know and most experiences most people have are going to be fine. And if you kind of prepare at least a little bit and you do it only with I don't know, friends you know well, you're probably not going to suddenly believe a conspiracy theory, right? But if you mm -hmm. don't know anything about it and then you meet someone who just tells you casually about how the world works while you're making all these connections and then and the thing is, a lot of these theories intuitively seem to make sense, right? Mm -hmm. They often, that's why they're appealing as well. They're very easy. They and, offer peace and understanding. Yeah, right. Yeah. You don't have to think too much about it. And if you are high on, I don't know how much acid, and you don't really yeah. know how to think properly, and they're yeah. like, well, it works like this. You know, this happens, this happens, this happens. This is why bad things happen. And you're like, oh, yeah, of course. This makes total sense. Yeah. And then getting back to that and reflecting on that can be really difficult if you don't have the time and space to do that. I really like the term that Patrick used, like the space of exploration. Uh, I think you need that during a trip, but also afterwards, right? To explore the ideas or the insights you gained 
and think again about them. Like, were they true actually? Was there actually anything to it, right? So, yeah. Oh, and also before, I would say, because I think if you set the whole frame quite straight for the experience saying, okay, this is the space where I will make certain experiences and I, I won't understand any of them yeah, or, or all of them, but it's okay. And when the experience like or the, the effect washes off, I will start to collect all the bits and pieces. And I think this is also done in, in science um, and it's called suspension of disbelief, if I remember correctly. So for a certain period of time, you just suspend all your beliefs and disbeliefs and just try to be as open as possible to the experience for this certain period of time. And then after this time ends, you start to interpret and analyze and say, okay, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. And then the integration um, starts. Yeah. So yeah. maybe this could also be helpful um, in gaining the best from the experience. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Absolutely agree, 100%. Yeah. It's such a valuable framework. Like, personally, I'm coming to understand like the, the, the deepness by which, or at the level at which our perceived reality is so internally generated. I mean, of course it is, but the, the, the level at which this is happening if you can cultivate an understanding of that, like you say, you can completely surrender yourself to the experience and just witness everything that comes up and not get too attached to any single thought or belief or theory or model. And then afterwards, try to see like, okay, what does it actually mean? What sense does this actually make for me? Um, and in that sense, if it's used in such a context, I think psychedelics can be such a tool. Yeah. Absolutely. Again, I really like this metaphor of putting stuff together. I think it really clicks for me, you know, like to take what you need and put back what you don't need and then make it work for you. And yeah, it's really great. Yes. Um, I wrote down something else just that just came to me while Patrick was talking. Um, yeah. So this was kind of the idea about where I agree with you, right? The opening up of the borders and maybe being in a fringe group and being better able to criticize and I thought if you have let's say more open mind borders I call them right so you're more open <laughs> to other experiences and other opinions as well will that lead to you being worse at strongly rejecting opinions right so for example there's some beliefs or opinions that I really strongly reject, right? There's beliefs in this world where I think this is absolute no good, right? There's literally no discussion about it. Let's take like neo-Nazism, right? Something mm -hmm. that very clearly everyone agrees is a bad thing. So if you're, let's say your critical borders open up a bit and you're generally more open, would you still be able to say, well, this is absolute dog shit? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or will you be also, I mean, I would believe I would, right? I hope I would, and I hope everybody would. But could it be that you might be more like, okay, well, you know, they have their opinion, I have mine, which I think mm -hmm. is also kind of depends, obviously, how you want to deal with yeah, yeah. sexually bad opinions. <laughs> but yeah. uh, what do you think? Is that something that could happen? Do you think there could be something there? Or... It's a very, very, very good question. I think this could actually even be like a next uh, discussion question. Like, um, can psychedelics or do psychedelics increase your relativism or relativism as a as a perspective? Yeah, I mean, you just pointed towards moral relativism, saying, okay, Nazis uh, were maybe they killed uh, several billion people, but you know what is good and bad. What are I, what, are, <laughs> what uh, who am I to decide? And I think there is some truth to it, maybe that you have this relativistic attitude as a, it feels like a gain, yeah? You know something new, okay, it's actually really like multiple indefinite perspectives and everyone may have certain truth, but then again, if everything is relativistic, what, what is the truth? Like, how do you uh, really make sense and how do you also put healthy boundaries in place as you put it and say, okay, no, I really don't want to, have anything to do with this 
group or this belief or this philosophy, um, whatever, right? So this is something I generally maybe criticize, but uh, I'm also curious about your opinion that this openness, as it's called also in research, of course, it's a good thing being more open to other people, being more open to other perspectives, but where is again the uh, the limit to it or is there a limit and how does it look like, right? Is it more like a spectrum where after openness then comes uh, naivete maybe, yeah? yeah? Or is it something totally different, yeah? And how to mm -hmm. distinguish these two? Yeah, so that's a very difficult question. I think about this often and it just came to me again uh, that not even only about, let's say, strong opinions where you strongly reject them now and maybe would you still do that, but kind of it, like politics in general, how politically active are you going to be when you're basically more open and more relativistic, for example, will you still be able to take strong standpoints, which I believe you need to have if you want to take political action. I mean, obviously, yeah. we do it. We, I mean, we volunteer for an organization that does it. We are very active, obviously, so it's not necessarily the case. But uh, I don't know if fear is the right word, but I think it might happen to people that they just become less strongly active, right? Because they focus maybe on their own development or they yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. things they choose and pick might not be the ones that make them active in the world. Yeah, this is also, I think, the, the critique that many people raise um, to or against the New Age movement, which is or kind of yeah, perpetuates this philosophy of everything is, is fine and uh, I don't have to care too much about uh, the things going on and it's, it's relativistic anyway. And this is something I, I'm, yeah, I'm struggling with for, for a longer time because also this uh, selflessness that is then proposed in some in some circles. As you as you said it, who will kind of do the change that is necessary if there's no selves anymore, right? Um, and again, is there a spectrum, or is there is selflessness something you could have while also having like a strong personality? Um, yeah, I think these are questions that should be discussed, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. I think it definitely plays again in our bigger question about how psychedelics affect sense making, right? If you, if everything only makes sense for you personally and you, right, your life works out perfectly, but you don't engage with the world around you, how useful was that actually, right? How good was it for you? I mean, I think that's something that happens to a lot of people that we get personal insights and to develop personally and to become whatever you wanted to become, but it's all still focused kind of on you and there's actually not that much action to better the world or change something. And um, Not that much of an output, yeah. Yeah, not that much of an output, right? I mean, everybody lives their lives, so, but I feel like this is more important, right, to get into the active part as well. And I'm wondering how psychedelics affect that as well. I think that's... Yeah, like you said, interesting questions, definitely. It, interesting. I almost see, a, I, don't, I don't feel very strong either way, but I see a difference in, because we're talking about like changing the world, right? And like a, being an effective agent of change within the system that we live in. Yeah. One of them is like by force, like you need to move things, you need to touch things, you need to affect things to be able to change it. And I think the other one, the the new age movement though like there is a lot of spiritual bypassing i think in those mm, groups yeah, yeah. Not, like they're, they're only they live on one side of the spectrum of the human condition and by not accepting this part of the but that's a different conversation i think that for a lot of people who are so much into this personal development they and I, I, I feel like I, this, it, this conversation kind of hit me because I was like, I was asking myself, hmm, is this like, a, do I do this as well? But I feel <laughs> like, uh, yeah, really, um, I feel like also it's, it has more of this leading by example attitude, right? Like I'm not going to force this perspective on people, but I'm just going to step into my own complete power as a human being and kind of radiate this perspective, but not 
you see that so i think yeah. you need as with anything as with relativism you need a certain balance right you need a bit of it but not all of it uh, i really get your points there I, I have to admit like the points i brought up are entirely influenced by my own opinion about how we should how you should how i want to act in the world right no no exactly but i find it that's, that's why it, right? it hits something really definitely definitely i like it and i appreciate that yeah yeah, yeah well, this point. is, by the way, also something that uh, Charles Eisenstein discusses in, in depth in, in his book. Um, yeah. Do you know him, Lucas? Charles no. Eisenstein, I can really Same. recommend him. Um, he wrote a book called uh, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. And so, oh, that sounds poetic, man. Uh, that sounds yeah, yeah. Um, very recommendable. By the, by the way, the 20 minutes are, are over and... Um, I oh. close the breakout room so they will start to come back All by right. one maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depends on if they accept it or not. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. So how many groups had we? Three? It was four groups. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I think it takes a little bit for everybody to come back. Yeah. Unless a lot of people left. <laughs> Which I don't know. Yeah. So maybe again, uh, clarifying um, how the further discussion would look like. If yeah. you have your webcam put on, of course, you can just simply raise your hand. And uh, if you haven't done already, there's this gallery view in Zoom where you are able to see all participants, right? Maybe you. Um, unconsciously have activated already but it's in the far right top corner you can select your your kind of view and if you put gallery view then you should see everybody there you go welcome back everybody we hope you've all had lovely discussions um so if I can make a suggestion, you know what? I'm going to lock the meeting room so nobody else can join now. Um, yeah, so we want to take this time to, like I said before, um, hear about your processes and yeah, hear you tell a bit about it. Um, is there anybody that already feels like they want to start. Yeah, bus. Hi. Uh, yeah, we uh, we our discussion produced uh, more uh, questions than answers. I think. <laughs> um, so maybe that's I don't know if that's good for the sense making or not. But, uh, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we, we were we were discussing about what what is uh, better sense making. Uh, could it be um, like getting closer to the truth, getting a better understanding of, of the world, a better representation of how the world is, or is it uh, so something that works better, so something that makes you happier or uh, or whatever? But um, so I think it's the first one. I think that that's that's what is going to be the uh, the intention was, um, yeah. I think um, psychedelics have the potential to make you um, more open, more and doubt more, and uh, become more aware. Uh, so yeah, like uh, Patrick was already saying, this can lead to um, I think more independent thinking. Um, if you are more aware of things, then you don't. Um, you don't follow uh, what you have automatically, what you have learned. Um, so, so yeah, but I think, but it, I think it can also like relaxing these beliefs can also leave kind of uh, a hole uh, or a void that can like be filled up by the the nearest thing. Uh, and this could be like, yeah, I, I thought. Yeah, your beliefs and sense making are formed over a long time by a large number of experiences. And if they are strongly influenced in a short amount of time, they may actually become more biased towards this specific situation. 
So um, that could be like uh, the point against. Um, and um, yeah, we were also talking about the, the Rebus model. And um, yeah, I think, I think this, there seems to be kind of a, a contradiction, but because psychedelics seem to uh, increase your pattern uh, recognition. So yeah, what, what I understand as uh, decrease, like decreasing false negatives. So you, you, you see more patterns that, that you normally wouldn't see that are there, but it can also decrease, also increase false positives. So you also see, you can also see patterns uh, that are not really there. Um, but this seems to be like contradicting the, the, the idea of that psychedelics increase entropy. So yeah, I, 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 uh, I'm kind of, I was kind of, uh, yeah, confused by that. Um, yeah, we were also, uh, talking about, um, yeah, so, so, uh, of course it's very uh dependent on the on the setting and uh like it, during during a psychedelic experience everything changes and uh you have to like deal with that you have to if if you learn to navigate this then you can probably in, increase your understand, understanding of the world and in yourself but if you if this doesn't work if you fail so to say then it may have a, neg a negative effect so it's like a double can go both ways. Um, so yeah, it's a, uh, psychedelics is a non-specific amplifier. Um, senses and imagination are amplified. Um, maybe maybe someone is from the group might want to add to this. But before yeah. um, you do that, maybe could you say who you're in the group with, Bus? I was with uh, Stein, um, let's see, Casper and Anita. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Just so we get a, a feel, yeah. And thank um, you very much, yeah. Yeah, thank you. For I think Yelena, you, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but you raised your hand, yeah. So now you can also unmute yourself, um, but I do it. Okay, I see, now. I see, yeah. thank you. <laughs> right. Um, Okay, I was in group with uh, Maria and uh, Natalie, and um, yeah, we kind of uh, danced around, uh, you know, this question not being fairly asked uh, in sense that question that answers are not so easily, uh, you know, yes and no, and uh, that especially psychedelics kind of uh, show you this, you know, uh, in between zone and um, I don't know, um, not so polarized things. So, for example, um, I don't know, when we had this first question, um, I don't know, my, my personal opinion about, um, I don't know, the quote from McKenna was that, yeah, I do agree with, for example, second part that, you know, they um, dissolve certain opinion structures and they, you know, change models of behavior and stuff, but I don't really think that like a government consciously thinks about this or like prevents them because of that. So it's kind of, uh, you know, both things and then um, yeah, the second part, um, does it improve or worsens? Uh, I think it definitely uh, depends on, I don't know how um, you definitely define sense making. I think um, that was already mentioned here. And um, yeah, like, um, I don't know, it's much broader sense than just what somebody puts in the, I don't know, experimental setting and so on. So uh, it definitely changes. And um, I don't know, we agreed that um, in a bigger sense, it definitely improves, even though you have this, I don't know, trade-offs, so to say, that you are definitely more open-minded and, um, I don't know, prone to bring certain concepts that are maybe not so, I don't know, easily handled in, like, your sober state or before taking psychedelics. So you could be more, um, I don't know, willing to um, accept some, like, theories or stuff but then I don't know if that is something just about yourself and like um, I don't know enriching your sense of self or your making uh, of sense of the world then it can be very positive and I don't know it can also be some theory and stuff but um, I think we are not so high in like knowing 
what is you know good or bad and like how much it actually makes sense and for whom so we're kind of in this ambiguous zone <laughs> yeah if this makes sense <laughs> Sure. If somebody wants to, if somebody wants to add something from the girls from my group, yeah, feel free. I don't know. Thank you, Yelena. <laughs> um, if there is anyone, and otherwise one of the next groups, um, if nobody from her group wants to add something. Um, yeah, I was in group with Vasco and Andreas. Um, uh, uh, part we talked about was the importance of respect for the psychedelic and to um, maybe approach it at first with some guidance and also the importance of integration afterwards, which it can be very nice to have someone to, to talk, talk with after, after this experience, you know, because it can be very overwhelming and uh, you're having all these, uh, these walls and barriers being, uh, being crashed into a thousand pieces and you want to uh, put them back up together, you know. Um, but you, you in this, in this time, you start questioning anything, uh, if anything is true or, or not, you know, what can you believe in anymore? And I think in this phase, it can be very important to have the, have the, the possibility to talk to someone. I think that's very, very important. And I, I, for myself speaking, I really wish I had done that a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i i was yeah with oscar and andres yeah, and it was that and the importance for me to take as a medicine like you were saying not as something to play with like like a ayahuasca ritual should should to should take for me yeah guidance and integration are the the main takeaways that i took with both of them yeah we very much agree that we also had a discussion between the three of us while you were in the breakout room and it's basically a point we mentioned as well that the preparation and intentions are very much influential for what's going to happen and also what oscar mentioned the integration afterwards uh, which both patrick and i mentioned right it matters who you go to with your experience and what you do. Yeah. I think we have one last group, right? Yeah, Daniel, do you want to? I kind of I saw you like leaning myself. forward there. Yeah. I mute myself. Um, I was with uh, Gendrese and uh, with Dani that has disappeared and with the David that has also disappeared. So I think we also uh, had the difficulties of coming to any conclusion in terms of the generalization and uh, the difficulties of choosing between binary options, that was obvious. And then um, we talked about uh, the import of set and setting, how also like, uh, and, uh, like it can also explain uh, a bit like what's the sense making um, the outcome of the of the of the thing, and uh, so, like in on, per, like more on a personal note, like what I remember of talking was about the the socio demographic aspects, like the characteristic, like where you come from, what is your educational level, that also influences, and I I tend to. Uh, I think of the concept of conspirituality, you know, where there is this uh, quite clear uh, social gener demographic group that goes into those beliefs, by which I uh, I'm referring to privileged and uh, and to the conspiracy theories that they tend to be like low educational level, and uh, so all those factors may play play a role. And so, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we also agreed that we could like do this together, that I would, we would speak, both of us here. So I give the word to Gendrese. Yeah, okay, because you had this experience with your Facebook that you, that you was giving, the, you gave this opinion from what you already experienced. So first for me, uh, 
what I was thinking is in general the idea of sense making and the the meaning and sense making as topics of philosophy in general and how complicated it is uh, I don't know just the issue of universality or when you start to think about what is all existence uh, with or without psychedelic like I don't know anyone that started to question these things and these questions can can have it like difficult time on, on getting to to a certain answer but uh, what i think that it's important here uh, i had to say something like when when yelena said for this uh, terence mckenna question about the government and this and i think that um, kind of government like not specifically specifically like one government but governments in general i think like why he said he meant that the way that society is organized now like we are individualized and any every one of us has like this sense of identity as a one person and like the role of us in society and the way that we are controlled it's like the way that society is organized is like from different point of view and for me, what I think that is important, it's 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 really good like this that Mind Foundation and a lot of others are doing in general for just researching more this different uh, different way that the, the uh, that the consciousness is and to to search like more for this um, answers and to push these boundaries of point of view of what reality is but for this sense making i think that i just don't have answer because i think that for for some person and for some for some things it can be like increasing you um, the level of perception for something else but maybe then you would have like something like you will start to believe also something that is more false like knowing for myself like after experiences i just felt that I'm kind of more smart and more dumb. I don't know, like like after years when I started to think like what it's all about. So if, like I'm grateful for something and like this, but then I just think like okay, it's not that I know exactly like what's going on. So it's just like it's kind of confusing. But uh, it's that's why it's important uh, to be like more serious discussion of really what's 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 all like what's all these things are because it's not just something and i also know that for some for some people it can be really complicated and i know it's not just myths that's i don't know this negative effect on the way of someone completely losing touch with reality like they are also true that but then like what exactly is reality like then this is like another question i don't know i just messed it up i i just try to say something but for me like what what i find it complicated is and what i find it difficult is also this that um, for example when you say like new age people or conspiracy theorists or i don't know just leftists and this uh, when you group like certain groups and you cannot belong to this and to that and just this kind of uh, points of view that we have uh, toward each other based and th this kind of uh, social identity that we create and we should keep all the time uh, it's again kind of um, problematic yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's definitely difficult where I, like we hear this more often you have trouble with the categorization and uh daniel expressed uh, trouble with the binary option of choice the, um, we did this on purpose of course to kind of evoke these kind of thoughts I, I like what you said about that psychedelics make you smarter and dumber at the same time. This is what gaining knowledge is, right? The more you know, the more you know how little you know. And I think that's what makes us curious and um, makes us striving for more. Um, so, I would, please. Yeah, okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, so I would be interested in asking all of you something which came up in kind of our discussion between the three of us. Uh, Patrick and I both kind of agreed um, that what happens with your sense making and your beliefs, for example, in conspiracy theories or whatever, kind of depends on what you bring into the psychedelic experience, right? So what you also, Oscar and Vasco said, right, your, your set and the preparation and intention matters. But I would be interested in 
what do you think are the most important skills to bring into an experience to improve your sense making, to make the world, let's say, to make use of the psychedelic experience and to have a improved sense making afterwards. So specific skills that you would think are needed. Of course, Andy and Patrick, feel free to jump in as well. Uh, because we didn't discuss it yet, I would be interested in what you think like, you need to make sense of the psychedelic experience. Maybe someone from the group wants to go first. Yeah, Andreas? Yeah, um, maybe meditation, I think, is an important aspect. Um, um, to have an inner calmness. Um, um, we were discussing, for example, Lucas, about your four points. The uh, question of suggestibility is, of course, also the other side of the coin of the openness. So I think these aspects go together and uh, heaven and hell sometimes are quite near together. So this is the question. It can be a very estranging experience and actually a deterioration of uh, sense making, of course, because it is a altered state. But at the same time, um, with a deeper understanding, for example, you can disguise uh, suggestibility better. Think about the first point, to disguise suggestibility. Of course, you might be more open, but on the other hand, you could be have on a deeper level an understanding of this guy who is talking into you really means something or wants to persuade you or push you in a certain direction. So also the ability of disguising suggestibility is there. Also the aspect of pattern recognition, of course, the, the, the likelihood to, to project something, but is also, or is not everything met pattern recognition and also in a, in a deeper sense. So the, the question again of projecting and seeing from a deeper perspective, new patterns. And as well as the third point, importance, for example. Of course, there can be only a feeling of importance. And this maybe on the next day you think what a stupid idea, but on the same time, it can be the real importance in the sense when something you have a real deep insight, of course, you have the feeling of a gnosis, of an epopty, a direct insight, which in reveals importance. So again, with this argument, you have both sides. You can have an illusionary feeling of importance and you have to, can have the real insight, which actually is important. So I think uh, you have at the same time, every of your argument was valid, but um, at the same time, maybe it can be helpful not to focus in the sense and the title of sense making too much on conspiracy theories, uh, you, you know, because uh, then you have already a negative uh, aspect on it. Sense making can also be that you, during the psychedelic experience, have a really profound psyche delon uh, revealing of the psyche. And in this sense, you can have a deeper insight. And in this sense, for example, of course, uh, it would be a, a broader and a deepening of sense making instead of a confusion. So I think both aspects come together and it depends on set and setting, whether it becomes a more uh, uh, disintegrating and, and false sense making, or it became as for example, Viktor Frankl. I mean, I think he is in this discussion a very important person, the, the guy who actually uh, invented a psychology of sense making, the logotherapy. And in this sense, of course, the psychedelic experience can have a very deep insight. So I think it depends. Both can happen. Yes. Just wanted to say I very much agree. <laughs> so both yeah. sides are always there, obviously. Yeah. Very well put. Thank you. So I want to take a few more minutes and then we have to start wrapping up. But I uh, would love to. I see that Stein is very excited. Please. Yeah. Can I say then one last, well, one last thing? Because you have I more minutes as well, yeah? So we have some minutes left. Go for it. All right. So I think there is also a little bit of a confusion because we talk about sense making as it is like one skill that, that we have that we use on like different things. But I think like sense making in like things like 9-11 and understanding the world is really different than 
sense making of like your own personal uh, subjective and uh, emotional experiences. So I think that we that we need to like sp split those things uh, uh, a little bit uh, and maybe increase our yeah, vocabulary in in what what things that we what what are the things that we actually do when we try to make sense of things and what and yeah and we actually have like clear definitions of what we really mean with with sense making because I think there's like a lot of yeah. Uh, areas to discover. Yeah, I think maybe shortly, like a very short definition, I also see sense making more in regards to uh, the empirical, right? So Bas proposed the idea of uh, sense making as being the, um, the ambition or the, the way to coming closer to truth and to what's happening in the world. Of course, there's also the individual sphere to it, your own thoughts and emotions. Um, but I think it's more like the really empirical out there. And yeah, this is at least how we put it out there. But I very much agree that we could increase our focus and improve our vocabulary. Yeah. I saw that someone wanted to answer to this as well. Yeah, Oscar? Yeah, it's me. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just another thought, which is <clears throat> after a strong psychedelic experience, we like I said earlier, like these walls, they go down and we start to see like backstage of many, many things. And I find that uh, sometimes we, we get spiraled into um, uh, a topic or a focus on our lens, uh, uh, which has a high complexity, but the answer to it is very simple and easy. And in order to accept the simplicity of this complex uh, area or topic, we are sort of like uh, we have to accept um, the naive, the naive, uh, our, how naive our mind was, you know. And sometimes it's too hard to accept that, so we keep pushing to find an answer that is even more that has the same level of complexity as 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 this question. And uh, I, I think it's very important to learn to accept. Take nine eleven. Take any any of these other conspiracy theories. You can, you have to at some point uh, prioritize your mental health before you get too obsessed into this, you know, and just accept that whatever truth you find or whatever it is, uh, in the end, it will not make a change. It is what, what happened, happened, you know? And, and you, can, you can do a certain amount of research until you just have to accept that it is what it is, you know? And I think this is a really, really important part of the sense-making uh, with, with psychedelics. Because it, it's in the word sense, you know, like your senses are being uh, awakened in some way. Uh, we are very detached from them in, in this civilized world. So they are being uh, awakened, but we have to learn to also control them. And that's why when there was said meditation earlier, I could not agree more. I think meditation is something we should all practice uh, from we're born till we are in the coffin, you know. And that can definitely also prepare us how to handle psychedelic uh, the knowledge that comes with the psychedelics more and and keep it keep it from not exploding in a volcano in our mind you know yeah thank you thank you very much is there anyone that would like to have some final remarks Wow, awesome. That's, uh, I, I just appreciate this moment. I quite like that in the discussion that we had in, when you were all in the breakout groups, we also came across to this balance point. I mean, Oscar uh, mentioned the community, uh, Daniel meant, mentioned the uh, intention and the preparation. Um, I think it is so important that like we've been speaking a lot about the experience itself and what you do afterwards, but this whole state, the way you go into it, actually what Lucas also asked us, um, what are the skills you need, but I think related to the meditation, also what is the state that your mind is in, where you don't need an act or you don't even, there's no active component to working with it, but it is a state where you're in so you can receive and go through this experience. 
um, is quite important. So we made a synthesis, why she specifically, <laughs> Patrick made a synthesis um, before we did this, because uh, of course we thought about that. And he stated that it is not so much the psychedelic experience or the state itself that determines whether people gain better or worse sense-making skills from it. Instead, it is again the set, setting and integration of these experiences that make the difference. So the preparedness, the way it's handled, the openness with which the experience itself is received. Or, as an example, a deconstruction of an old belief system, like Boss said, could turn into new beliefs because something is filling in the void. Like, oh, everything is different than what I thought it was. And you're completely throwing out all the old information instead of trying to put it all together and make sense of it in the larger framework of your life. Um, as opposed to turning into a more humbled attitude towards one's own knowledge, like Oscar said, and a healthy skepticism with, okay, maybe I am more naive and maybe I need to accept that my mind is limited and you know it's it's this surrender that i need to do to be able to actually receive this information or to experience this growth uh, most notably um and yeah the community we've already mentioned um that if the diverse opinions are given um it could be constructive or if everybody is adhering to the same framework you could have a situation where there's group thinking it's not constructive um yeah i feel like I'm, I'm personally also very happy right now because our last discussion was interrupted with some unpleasantries and i feel like we've all come together and we've all like really shared some thoughts and uh, influenced each other in a positive way i quite like that so i would love to make the last poll um whether your initial opinion changed and it is now coming up. I'm trying really hard not to say anything to not like make the same mistake of priming again. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you, thank you. One more person is voting. I'll give it a few more seconds. Then if you want to vote, otherwise I'm going to close it now. Cool. So three people's or three, yeah, three people's opinion moved towards that it rather improves the sense making. One became more skeptical and seven didn't change. I like that. <laughs> Maybe it's the confirmation bias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe somebody. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. Awesome. Um, so, on a more practical note, first of all, thank you all so much for participating. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. No, wonderful. My side. Thanks, everyone. Uh, but before you leave. I would love to say that actually today the Mind Foundation released their uh, new website. Um, and if you don't know it yet, please, uh, well, please take a look if you feel inspired to do so. Um, it's a cool organization, but of course I would say that. Um, and if you like what we do or you like psychedelic research in the larger framework and if you like being a part of building towards a society that tries to incorporate a conscious attitude toward all things into society, then please consider um, becoming a member because then you support us and you can stay in touch with us. Um, and that also allows you to join our forum where of course there's a continuous ongoing discussion and it's a much longer term platform of course, and it has a lot of resources. Um, I posted the link 
a in the chat uh, directly towards the membership page, but you can of course go to the main page. Um, yeah, and then I would just like to finish with a large thank you to everyone for your participation and your insights. Cool. Thank you again and have a nice evening. Yeah. And have hope to see you everyone. again for the next discussion. Yeah, definitely. Bye bye. Have a good evening. All right.